What really happened to Susan Oliver the true story of Star Trek's first green girl? When you think of iconic images of women from Star Trek the original serials, the green over Ryan dancing girl from the first pilot The Cage has got to be near the top of the list. The image of the women dancing painted all green with bright red lips was unlike practically everything else on TV at the time. Go to a Star Trek convention today and you're sure to find at least a couple of fans dressed up like an Orion slave girl that first green girls started it all. Serious track fans will know the Ryan animal woman is only one incarnation of the character Vina. And she's played by Susan Oliver. An actress who is the subject of a new documentary directed by George Pappy edited by Amy Glickman Brown. Pappy decided to make his felt. The green girl. After casually deciding to look all over up on I. M. D. B. One day and realizing she was so much more than one role. Iconic as it was. I found an 8 or 9 page resume. And I saw she had directed a mash and trapper John M.D. 30 years ago. Women for not directing TV they're barely doing it now. Papi said at a screening in Las Vegas this week. And yet. People today don't seem to know much about this groundbreaking moment. The green girl runs at quite a clip through Oliver's TV and film resume which is extensive to say the least. Film historians critics and her fellow actors remember her as incredibly versatile able to play anything from a vamp to a junkie to a person with split personalities to a good girl and of course a green girl. There aren't too many shows you can find from the late 50s to the early 70s that she wasn't in at some point. Sent broadcast historian Mark Dope as, for example, Oliver appeared as different characters in multiple episodes of Route 66 Rawhide, Wagon Train Dr. Kildare and the Virginian. Some weeks you couldn't open the TV guide and find her in three different roles in three different shows. Watching snippets from her TV roles as well as films she appeared in like Butterfield Date. With Elizabeth Taylor you can see what an incredible range she had. But there were even more remarkable things about all over including the fact that after an airplane crash she decided to become a pilot and ended up flying solo over the North Atlantic. Under very treacherous conditions. She won five world records in flying light planes and was also one of the first women to fly a Learjet. So is it that Susan Oliver who played opposite so many big name stars. Who directed for TV in the 1980s. Who conquered her fear of flying and became a pilot isn't remembered as a big success if she's remembered at all. Sadly the cutthroat nature of show business and sexism in the media seem to have major factors. On her solo Atlantic flight she was forced to land in Denmark instead of going all the way to Moscow her goal. Because the Russian government wouldn't grant her the airspace. She returned to the States to reporters that called her flight a failure and seems more interested in her legs than her piloting skills. Did they ever ask Lindbergh to bear his biceps? Oliver asked in her autobiography. Quoted extensively in voiceovers during the film. As well Oliver had turned to directing partly because she had an age where there were very few female roles available and partly out of a frustration with the limited nature of the rules there were. As sociological Kerry Ferris says in the film. There just weren't other roles for the middle-aged woman that she could play she played college students well into her thirties and there didn't seem to be anything for an age between college students and grandma in Hollywood. Interviews with actresses like Lee Mary with a Catwoman in the 1966 Batman film. And Celeste Yarn all Star Trek T. O.S. reinforced the challenges of the era for actresses. Friend and fellow actor Gary Conway remembers. For a woman to direct a film would be like a woman playing professional football. When Pappy asked the other male actors he interviews if they'd ever worked with a female director most said no. On her second directing job on Trapper John M.D. the crew resisted her authority. I suspect that our crew just wasn't ready for a female director at the time. Says Charles C. but one of the show's stars. Without anything to see ask Dick reference from them. It was going to be a long shot for Oliver to get any more directing jobs. Friends and family interviewed for the film report she went downhill from there. Becoming demoralized and not taking as much care with her health. In her autobiography. Published in 1983. All Over actually says life has not worked out happily ever after for me. All Over his last acting job was in Freddy's Nightmares in 1988. 
In the following year she was diagnosed with culture coal cancer. She died in 1990 at the age of 58. The final scene in The Green Girl is the audio recording of the last voicemail message she left herself on the day she died. And what she says goodbye. Happy said that as he found out more about Oliver I became more and more outraged shows with a B. S. Deal it was for women who wanted to step outside traditional roles. I just felt like someone owes her this. Goodbye Green Girl Susan Oliver.